Well, I mean, there's sort of two areas where bad breeding is a problem to these animals or to their welfare. Firstly, it's the environment they're often bred in. It's often very poor, hygiene levels are low, there's often overcrowding and lack of proper vaccination and preventative health measures such as deworming and defleeing in these animals. So they're already being um, kept in an environment which increases their disease risk. So one of the most common things we see is a lot of sick puppies, whether it be a simple viral um, sort of upper respiratory tract infection or a more severe case of distemper or parvovirus. Secondly to that, on top of that, unfortunately because a lot of these breeding establishments have very uncontrolled breeding, i.e. they're not breeding animals that are genetically in good condition, they also often suffer with a lot of inherited genetic issues. Um, examples include hernias, um, entropion, which is where the eye lid folds in and rubs on the eye. A lot of these animals have got what we call excessive facial folds. These are folds on their face, which really cause a lot of problems with infection and irritation. Um, hip dysplasia is very common in bigger dogs, such as golden retrievers and labradors. Um, I mean, it's a whole host. I could go on and on, but unfortunately, these are the two main areas that we see where bad breeding has, um, and bad conditions really have a massive effect on these animals' welfare. A lot of these breeding farms, because they keep a lot of animals, um, often the conditions they're kept in are very poor. They're often given very little space to move. They're overcrowded. The hygiene is often a massive issue with animals um, having their feces and urine not cleared away properly. Often their feeding bowls are not properly cleaned. Food as well can get soiled and, and, and dirty. So this environment is an absolute breeding ground for disease, whether it's skin disease in the case of mange or fleas, ringworm, or or in the case of infectious, most serious infectious diseases such as distemper or parvo or, or kennel cough. And unfortunately, these animals are often immunosuppressed as well. That means that they really haven't had close contact with their mother after birth. They're often taken away from their mum too early, which means that their immune system is not strong, which of course enhances unfortunately their ability to get sick as well. All these things, like I say, almost lead to a, a soup of disease in these breeding um, factories. Most of the diseases that we see in um, animals from pet shops are treatable, although some of them are fatal, unfortunately. They, it really depends on the immune system and when we catch the disease and what sort of body condition the animal is in. Obviously distemper is treatable but it's also fatal. Um, parvo is treatable but it's also fatal. Um, so you know really what you want to do is have these animals kept in a much better environment, kept with their mother, their mother being fully vaccinated, themselves receiving vaccines, deworming, defleeing and basically these diseases shouldn't exist. They're all totally preventable by good hygiene and vaccination. The females that are used in breeding often are treated a little bit like factories. Um, they really are tending to be bred, overbred, which means they're often not given any rest in between having litters. Really, a, a female bitch, if you're going to breed from it properly, should have a break in between litter, which means they should be allowed a season where they're not mated. Um, they should be given a chance to recover. Breeding puts a huge strain on their bodies. Um, you know, lactating and looking after five, six, maybe more puppies is a very major undertaking. And obviously, imagine human beings looking after five or six children. That's a lot. Um, and really, people underestimate how much it does take out of the female. And obviously, it's very important to give her a chance to recover and not to overbreed her beyond her age as well. I mean, a lot of these breeding farms have got um, bitches that are maybe six, seven, eight years old. And really, um, after sort of five to six years of age, the breeding should cease, you know, they should have a rest, just like people. It would be the equivalent of us, you know, breeding in our 60s and 70s, and there's a reason why that doesn't happen. Some defects caused by bad breeding can be rectified by surgery, but obviously they're not the answer to the problem. The problem is not to breed them in in the first place and it is possible through good breeding not to have these traits in these animals. Obviously the closer the relatives are to each other 
um, the more highly likely there are going to be more genetic abnormalities. Examples of um, breed abnormalities that can be rectified include the excessive facial folds that I mentioned previously, which obviously can cause a lot of irritation to the eyes. Interning eyelids can also be corrected, as can hernias, deformed knees, deformed hips. But really, a lot of these op um, operations are salvage procedures. And you also have to remember that you're putting an animal through a procedure that really they shouldn't be going through. So not just the risk of anesthesia, but the pain associated with the procedure and the recovery recovery time. All these things obviously do have an impact on its welfare as well. So even though they're correctable, one would obviously much prefer them not to happen in the first place. It is possible to avoid all these genetic defects through good breeding. There are various ways to prevent um, these genetic defects from happening. Firstly, um, parents can be tested. Um, for the de defects, um, particularly as a test now for, for spinal and nervous defects in dogs. Also, physical exam can detect a lot of these defects because a lot of them are physical issues. Obviously, heart problems can be listened to and heard by stethoscope and by cardiac ultrasound. So, you know, anyone who's really considering breeding an animal really, really, really should get their animal health checked first to make sure they're not carrying any of these defective genes. Of course, some may be hidden and may just skip a generation, and those are obviously a lot harder. But a lot of these are defects that we see, their parents will have the same defects too. And it's really not fair to use those type of animals for breeding. I would say consider either adoption um, through one of the many registered animal welfare organizations there are in Hong Kong, or if you truly, truly have got your heart set on a specific type of animal that you don't think is available, if you've looked, then really go and visit the breeder. Go to where these animals are being bred from. Insist on seeing the mother, the father, checking out the work, living environment of the animal, making sure that this person is truly looking after their welfare and not just breeding them for the money um, and, and obviously sort of profit. End this trade in cruelty. Boycott the bad breeder.